Hi there, Scott here, and today I've got something exciting to share. The all new Nexus Rebel LS engine management system and the terminated wiring harness from Haltech. So if you're planning on putting a General Motors LS into your hot rod, a boat, a muscle car, a resto mod, or a lawnmower, you are gonna to wanna to stick around for this. Firstly, Let's look at what the Rebel LS is and what it is not. If you're looking for a plug and play ECU for a late model LS powered vehicle, then this is not the ECU for you. It does not connect to any factory wiring harnesses and it won't communicate with a factory communication network or known as a CAN network. So the dash, the ABS and the body control module would not work as expected. But what it is, is an engine management system and a terminated wiring harness package that provides a really, really cost-effective and simple tuning solution to get your Gen 3 or Gen 4 General Motors LS engine up and running in your special project. So, what's in the box? Well, first and foremost, the engine management system, or ECU, and the main wiring trunk of the wiring harness. Then, there are wiring breakouts to suit your specific engine variant. There's a breakout for the Gen 3 cable throttle and the idle control motor, or a breakout for the drive-by wire throttle that's fitted to the Gen 4 engine. There's an injector breakout to suit the EV1 style injector connectors found on the Gen 3 engine, or a breakout to suit the EV6 injectors found on the Gen 4 engine. In the Gen 4 kit, we also provide a drive-by wire throttle pedal breakout loom to suit the factory Corvette style pedal. Both the Gen 3 and Gen 4 kit include alternator breakouts to suit either the Bosch, the Delco, or sorry, I'm, I'm gonna butcher this, but Yazuki alternator plug, the big one, because you could have any alternator fitted to your LS engine. We also include a Bosch LSU 4.9 oxygen sensor that wires directly to the Rebel's onboard wideband controller, and an M18 by 1.5 weld on bung, so you can fit the oxygen sensor into the exhaust system. There's also an M14 by 1.5 air temperature sensor and an aluminum weld on, so the air temp sensor has something to screw into. But wait, there's still more. There's also a breakout harness allowing the use of the Gen 4 oil pressure sensor and map sensor, as well as the speed sensor found on the T56 manual transmission. And, of course, a couple of ring terminals and an isolator boot to safely supply power to the whole thing. The beauty of this breakout system is that if you want to add drive-by wire to your Gen 3, normally a cable throttled engine, you can simply grab the Gen 4 drive-by wire throttle breakout and a Corvette pedal breakout, sold separately of course, plug them in and away you go. The same thing goes for converting from EV1 to EV6 injectors or swapping alternators. There's no need to be cutting into wiring harnesses or booking in at the auto electrician. All these optional breakouts can be found on our website. The Rebel LS is sold in two different part numbers, one to suit the Gen 3 engine and one to suit the Gen 4 engine. It's only if you plan on interchanging Gen 3 and Gen 4 parts on your engine would you need to grab any extra breakout harnesses. Everything required is included in either the Gen 3 or the Gen 4 kit. Now, if you're unlucky enough to have an incident that requires replacement of any part of the harness, read engine bay fire or rat damage, don't be alarmed. Each part of the harness is part numbered and can be purchased as a replacement part separately, making things nice and easy. Now, onto the differences between the Rebel LS and the Haltech R3 range. One of the biggest differences between the R3 and the Rebel LS is the ability to configure different pins and wires to do virtually anything. And while that's great for flexibility, it's a little more time consuming and does leave room for error. With this in mind, we've set up the Rebel LS with dedicated inputs and outputs that don't require configuration and work as intended right out of the box. Every wire in the harness is labeled and configured in the software, so there's no chance of a setup or a configuration problem. There's simply no need to be spending hours working on a pinout or assigning pins and functionality in the software. Just read the labels on the harness and plug them into the associated device be it injector one, coil one, or the coolant temp sensor, for example. Having dedicated inputs and outputs has allowed us to keep hardware and wiring costs down, allowing us to pass that cost saving onto you. But 
We know that if you're putting an LS into your project car, there'll always be a level of customization. So we've included a configurable 25 amp output, five digital outputs, four digital inputs, and two analog inputs. These are user configurable and extra to the inputs and outputs required to run the engine. That's more than enough to be dangerous, if you wanna be. Now let's take a look at the ECU itself. It looks a lot like an R3, and again, we've done that to keep the cost down. But inside, it's been designed specifically for the LS engines. About the only visual difference is the use of screw terminals over the Shorelock connectors found on the R3. Shorelocks can be a little hard to come by, so we've done this to just make it super easy to use. On the transmission side of things, the harness includes the electrical connector for the T56 speed sensor, but you could run any manual gearbox or mechanically shifted automatic, like a power glide or a turbo 400. We will be adding support for popular electronically controlled transmissions in the future, and they will integrate with the current harness system. The Rebel LS has a CAN communication network, which allows communications with all of the popular Haltech CAN devices, like the IC7 dash, the eight and 15 button keypads, the power distribution modules, or the PD16s. In fact, you could connect up to four PD16 units, just like all of the Haltech products and have the entire car, including headlights and taillights controlled through the engine management system. This would avoid the need for external fuses and relays. As for the software, in a Haltech first, there's a setup wizard that runs when you first go online with the engine management system. It asks for a little information about your particular setup, then it builds the fuel and ignition maps as well as makes setup changes depending on the configuration. It'll ask things like, what variant of engine you're using? What's the compression ratio? Uh, what camshaft are you using? Uh, what injectors, which coils? Basically asking to let us know which components are in play so we can build the closest tune file for your combination. Then there's just one more step. Hit the key and she'll run, ready to hit the road or the track. The Rebel LS ECU is equipped with advanced long-term learning, which allows it to monitor the air-fuel ratio, the ignition table, the knock detection feedback, as well as the idle quality, and continually make adjustments in the background. The longer the engine runs, the better the tune-up gets. Of course, you can go online with the Nexus NSP software and make tuning changes, just like you're used to with the rest of the Haltech range, but there's certainly no need to. The setup wizard takes care of it all. And lastly, the Rebel LS is compatible with the Haltech Connect app, which will be available later in the year. This app allows you to monitor data in real time on your smartphone or your tablet, as well as make tuning and setting changes like adjusting your rev limit or your launch control RPM. It'll also allow you to check or clear trouble codes or do a little data logging. There's plenty to be excited about with the Rebel LS.